There we go, moving for free again. Well, hopefully that's gonna last us a good few hours. Uh, there is a storm coming ahead of us, of course, so we're on the clock. Let's see what we get out of it. Yeah, look, there's a storm coming. So what do we do? Let's get a spinner cam. <laughs> Forward half an hour, total mayhem. <laughs> Man overboard, everything is lost. I think I saw that film. <laughs> The spinnaker needs a wash anyway, it'll be fine. Got the dog bed out, and it's been sweet dreams ever since. I can trim that sail with my foot now, I've got it really practiced. Just a little in and out on the winch, and we're good. Just getting myself ready to settle in and get comfortable for the first sunset on the Caribbean. It'll take a lot of getting used to having the sun set in weird and wonderful directions. It's been behind us for the past 2,000 miles, uh, so it's a bit odd to see it forward of the beam. Uh, so far, as you can see, the passage is going swimmingly. Uh, we're just gliding along through crystal clear water. Uh, so hopefully this is a sign of things to come when we arrive in Bocas. We've got about uh, seven to ten knots of wind variable um, ahead of us, but we're managing to keep a really good course and uh, sail at about four knots. So far very good. It's a lot more sailing than I expected for this part of the world, so far at least. First mate's down below, he's scurried off to make a delicious uh, fish supper. Uh, there's been lots of promises made about what's coming up, so looking forward to that. Expecting something really special for the captain's first passage on the Caribbean. Confession time, we are on overnight passage and the first mate hasn't made any food for the passage at all. Then I promised the captain that I'm gonna catch a fish and that didn't happen either. So, uh, you know, beggars can't be choosers. I'm scraping the barrel here. So tonight on the menu will be nachos. He loves nachos and tinned fish. He will never know the difference. It's smoked marlin. It will be amazing. Obviously, I'm using only fresh ingredients for this dish. Nothing tinned, everything is fresh. Freshly baked beans <laughs> and freshly collected olives, sprinkled with fresh jalapenos. There you go. <laughs> you get what you pay for. Sprinkle a bit of cheese, he's gonna love it. I mean, look at that. Who wouldn't like this? All right, all right, I'm coming. Apparently we need to tuck, the wind is building and we're going the wrong direction. Just down below, preparing the freshest dinner the captain would have in the Caribbean Sea. And I'm being disturbed. <laughs> so come on, let's do it. That's right, time to tack. The freshest dinner can wait five minutes, it'll still be fresh. Or as fresh as dinners usually get around here anyway. Ta -da -da! Freshly caught fish. A la Pedro. Wow. Oh, this just looks delicious. I didn't see the first mate catching any fish or plucking any olives, but he did promise. Looks amazing. Mm. Marlin. Smoked and everything. Don't know how he managed to smoke that marlin down there all by himself. Maybe a few diesel fumes on it. And I thought that nachos would shut up everyone. Clearly not. Still talking. He tried. I don't want to jinx it, but it looks like that for our first overnight in the Caribbean, we're going to have a clear skies and no squall. Have I just jinxed it? The last overnight had all that crazy lightning in the sky and we lost that computer. So let's hope you don't have a repeat performance. Well, we can't really have a repeat performance because we've already lost the computer. Might bring it back to life if it's struck again. Maybe we should strap it to the mast and hope for resurrection. That's right. It'd be like Dr. Frankenstein with the electrodes. It's alive! Uh-oh, 
I think I really jinxed it. This is right behind us. Let's hope we can sell faster than it's moving. Captain, full steam ahead. Well, it looks like we might be getting wet after all. I thought we were managing to dodge all of these uh, little storms on the horizon, but then a big one has just formed behind us. Um, the one behind us is still a good eight miles away, but it's enormous. I've just been watching it grow and grow on the radar. Uh, it's at least five miles across uh, and growing. So uh, it's a bit of a beast already. Let's see which is faster, Bohemia or the Squall? Sadly, like with most races, it's winning against little old Bohemia. Well, the storm has caught up with us. Uh, there are drips everywhere, but the rain is quite light so far, so uh, I think we've avoided the worst of it, fingers crossed. Uh, the first mate, of course, has come up with the best plan to avoid the worst of it. He's uh, tucked up nice and warm, snug in bed down below. Uh, I've zipped in the sun covers in some uh, vain attempts to keep dry. Uh, it's kind of working so far, it's keeping most of the, uh, the sideways rain off of me. Uh, let's just hope that uh, this doesn't get much worse. It's 6 a.m. and I am so happy to see the sunrise. Oh my god, what a night. The entire night we were surrounded by thunder, lightning and heavy rain. I have definitely jinxed it last night. I've been on my watch since 3 a.m. and it's been insane. The show that we have seen with the lightning was quite intimidating. I was praying ever since that we don't get hit. Tom is sleeping. We are only about 16 miles away from the island and it doesn't look that great because there is more rain where we are heading. So I think it's going to be another wet arrival. It's wet, wet, wet. It's been raining for the last two hours and no sign of ending. One of the most comfortable anchorages, but we believe this is the land breeze which is going to stop later on. Island looks fantastic, really, really remote and jungly. So, welcome to Isla Escudo de Veraguas. It looks beautiful, just a few rays of golden sunlight, and it would be a tropical paradise. We're anchored in about 10 and a half feet of water over a gorgeous sand bottom. Anchoring this shallow feels like a distant memory for us. Uh, tides apparently aren't a thing anymore now that we're in the, uh, the Caribbean. Uh, we're on a low tide right now and it's going to go up to plus one foot. Uh, so we'll be in 11 and a half feet of water at high tide. That's quite nice. It takes one dimension of stress out of the whole experience when you're not rising and falling 20 feet. Oh, look at that. Some golden sunshine right on time. Now this is what I'm talking about, turquoise waters. Welcome to the Caribbean! Turquoise raging seas coming into our anchorage more like. It's going to be a very interesting beach landing coming up. Still, as long as it's turquoise, I don't care. <laughs> about to approach our first landfall of the Caribbean. How exciting! We find that not taking the outboards is so much easier because if we're going down, at least we're going down in a simple manner, rather than having the outboard in the water and dealing with that afterwards. Okay, backwards. Woo! Right, now we... Oh! We 
is even worse. <laughs> is that all you've got, Caribbean? We learned that on the Pacific. You know, as the Dalai Lama once said, happiness is when what you do, think and say are in harmony. Well, I always said and thought that we should come to the Caribbean, didn't I? Just like the Dalai Lama. I'm very happy. I don't think we're going to be venturing into the jungle here. It looks very raw, very untouched, which means jaggers and pumas. Well, not bad for our first landfall in the Caribbean, I think. We could have done much worse. We are the only boat here. The water is turquoise and the island is green and lush. Just stunning. Thank you, Captain. See, this captain to give up despite what he says. I've never seen a tree graveyard quite like this. We're wondering what's caused it. This is on the leeward side of the island. Maybe it's a, a victim of rising sea level. The roots have just been all washed out. Welcome to the entertainment of the day. We wonder how these trees got uprooted. <laughs> That's as exciting as it gets on this island. Real drama. All right, who's on alligator watch? Literally, if it's not the jaguars and the pumas or the sea snakes, it's, it's the alligators. Oh my god, there's a... It's a big one, huh? Crocodile! Yeah. Oh, we found a crocodile! Ooh. Oh no, 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 no! I'm out! <laughs> it's, where is it? It was just there. Literally, that was like three foot crocodile. About five feet away from me. Look at us now, standing on this tree truck and the croc is somewhere there hiding. I'm sure that'll save us. Yeah, I just saw a long tail, I thought it was a snake and then I followed it around and it led to some claws. The other side, it's just under this log. It's very well hidden. And uh, sadly, I uh, got a little cut on my foot so there's blood in the water now. That's not gonna help. Yeah, this is definitely croc territory. I say we retreat immediately. <laughs> I'm out! <laughs> <laughs> you don't need to outrun the croc as long as you outrun the captain. There was something not quite right on our passage over here. We weren't making the speed that we should have done. Uh, we had the engine revved right up to 2500 and still we were almost a knot short of our top speed. Uh, so I'm gonna just go down there, have a quick look, make sure everything's good down below. I think it was probably the current against us, but we have no good way of measuring current. Now we've lost our buddy boat boundless. We used to call them up on the radio and ask what it was. That's the best way, rather than investing in instruments. <laughs> During our luck, we would have been motoring for the last 15 hours with a plastic bag wrapped around the prop. That's right. We felt a bit of drag and I instructed the first mate low drag again on this passage, so it must have been the plastic bag. But the water looks so inviting. I can't wait to have our first dip in the Caribbean Sea. And this is how we measure our deck. I simply send the captain under the keel and see whether he can touch the bottom. I'd say we've got about six foot under us. Almost, almost exactly. Most precise measuring of depth you can think of. Takes a while, but it's very accurate. Bohemia style.
first cocktail of the Caribbean. I can't believe it. Firstly, that we've waited that long, and secondly, that we're here. It's good. Tastes just the same as the Pacific, though. Cheers! Special thanks in this episode go to all of our patrons for keeping Bohemia's crew from running dry. If you've been enjoying our episodes and would like to buy us a drink, then please head over to www.patreon.com forward slash Sailing Bohemia, where you'll find a small menu of our favorite cocktails to choose from. Champagne for everyone! <laughs> If you enjoyed this episode, then please don't forget to tell YouTube all about it by commenting, liking, and sharing. See you next time.